So have you ever wanted to get into 3D printing, but you're not sure how? It's, everything seems a little complicated. There's so many options out there. Well, I might have something you might be interested in. So in this box, I have the Tina 2S 3D printer. Now, when they contacted me and wanted to send this for me to check out, I thought to myself, it might be pretty interesting for you all because it is kind of considered a beginner printer. It's good for kids, for learners, for beginners. So anyone who hasn't gotten into 3D printing, but would like to start that process in an easy way. I personally have a 3D printer that I have used. And the issue that I have sometimes is that it's kind of difficult to use. Sometimes it'll mess up, things will go wrong. It's a little more complicated. And so getting something like this, opening it up, checking it out and seeing how it works, I think will be a real benefit to me and to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box. Then we'll put it together. Then we'll try it out and we'll print some stuff. All right, so obviously this is a big box and i usually use my overhead camera but i'm not sure i will be able to do that too much so in the box you do get some pla so pla is basically the substance you use to 3d print with so they give you a nice little spool of that which is nice you can always buy more and you can always get more different colors whatever you want but it's nice that they kind of provide some for you to start with. So let me set this off to the side. And it looks like it is packaged very nicely in this foam, wrapped up with saran wrap here. And the good thing about this is that with my current 3D printer, there was a lot of setup. There was a whole DIY aspect to it where you had to do a whole bunch of setup. And my understanding with this is that when it comes, it is basically all set and ready to go. Now the plus side to that is that you don't have to really do a lot of install or setup. I guess we'll see that here. But the downside of it is that it is a little bit of a smaller print surface. So if you're looking to do larger prints, this might not be for you, uh, but we'll do a test and I'll show you how big it is and how big the prints you can actually get. So this is the printer itself. And as you can see, it's not too big. If you look at kind of like my hands or like the size of a water bottle, you can see that a standard water bottle is pretty much bigger than the printing surface itself. So again, like I said, if you're planning to use uh, larger prints, uh, it won't work, but a lot of times you can take prints and sort of cut them apart into pieces that go together with glue or other methods so that you can make larger prints on smaller devices like this. Now, this is one of those things that I am going to use the instruction manual for because I don't know how to set it up, but I'm pretty sure it's fairly easy. And if you'll notice on the top here, there is two QR codes. One is for support, but the other is for their cloud app. What they've done is they've made basically a whole marketplace full of 3D models that you can actually use with your phone and send directly to this without having to put it on like an external SD card, bring the SD card over and print with it, which is normally what I have to do. Now, just because they have the app doesn't mean that you have to use the app. You can actually uh, put your stuff on a memory memory stick and put it into the TF slot right here on the top. And then you can print directly from that. So it gives you that advanced option while keeping the opportunity to use the app in a simple mode, always there for you so that you can kind of do prints, do whatever you want. Now it looks like we have to remove some of the packing material, also some tape here that we need to pull off. One of the steps that they have you do here that I had a little bit of a difficult time with was the fact that they have this, what they call the shaft coupling shell. So it's basically this yellow piece right here. I'm um, not sure if you can see it too well, but basically there's a yellow piece right down there. So make sure that you do remove that. And that's what it looks like right there. It's basically just a protective cover for the uh, shaft that moves the 3D printer up and down. And what we're going to do right now is hook up the printer filament. So this is PLA, I believe. There's different types of filament. The PLA, I think, is more common. All right, so this took a few seconds to figure out. So the way that this works is on the side here, you have a spool holder and you have a filament motor here. So this pulls the filament up and into the tube. So what you do is you bring the tube up through the top here, and then this needs to plug into this right here. So this is where the filament will go into. So what we wanna do is we wanna push down on this little plastic piece right here and insert the tube until it stops. Okay, so that feeds the filament up through there. And then once we do that, we can plug it in. 
So what we want to do now is go ahead and take the filament here and put it up through the bottom. So this right here, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but there's like a little engaging uh, motor here. You have to push this up in order to put the filament through and into the tube. So you can see here, I've brought the filament up to the motor itself, and then it's gonna go up into this tube and into the 3D printer area down here. So now what we wanna do is pick English for our language or whatever your language is, load filament, hit next. Now what that'll do is basically pull filament all the way through this tube and get it prepped. So it's gonna heat the nozzle and bring that filament through to get ready for printing. I'm noticing now that you're actually supposed to take and push this filament all the way through until it enters the nozzle. So that's gonna be quite a bit of filament that you're gonna push through, but you can kind of see it through the little tube and then it should hard stop on you. All right, so we're still heating the nozzle here. We have the filament put up through the tube into the nozzle where it prints and we should be able to go. Let me go ahead and download this app while that's heating up. So all I have to do is scan the QR code. And I'm gonna kinda tilt this up a little bit. What, what you'll see is you can see a small bit of filament sort of coming down out of the nozzle. That's because it's heating it up to a plastic, to a melting point, and then you'll get a small little sliver like this and letting you know that you have the filament in the right place. Now that the filament's in, I'll go ahead and load, hit the load filament, and it's basically gonna purge a little bit. And I'll turn this here a little bit for you to see so you can see it's purging out that filament kind of getting prepped for the first print. And it is kind of pulling some of the filament through here and purging out there. And this is all just in preparation for the first print. All right, so it looks like they want me to configure the 3D printer via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so I'll hit configure. Okay, so it wants me to scan the QR code that is shown right here in the, in the Wi-Fi network menu. And it's gonna scan for the device, scanning for Wi-Fi hotspots. And now if you're just printing from the TF card or the storage card, you don't have to do this part. And once that's set up, set up we wanna add an online device, scan the QR code again, and it's now online and ready to go. Super easy to set up, just a couple steps with the app. Uh, now we should be able to print some stuff. All right, so I wanna pick something from their library that will fit in this device. Let me go ahead and try this here. Uh, it's just a little dragon. I'm gonna pick, it's gonna be work, it'll work for the Tina 2S, which is good. So we will go down here and we will click print. And that'll pull up this menu. We pick our printer, the Tina 2S, and hit start. And there it goes, I suppose. Oh, nope, I got an error. So this is good. This is why I kind of set these things up and test them with you guys. There is no TF card. And what this system does here with the app is it actually takes and downloads to the storage card, okay? So the storage card, they actually provide one. They provide a couple things in here and I'll show you what they are. This one here is going to be a TF adapter with a USB-A, so you can plug it into your machine and put 3D files directly on here. It also comes with a USB-A to a USB-C adapter and that might be for you know your computer depending on if you wanna hook up the USB cable that they gave to you. They give you a couple of tools here to be able to adjust the nozzle and replace the nozzle and clean the nozzle. And that's what this is here. This is for cleaning the nozzle. And a glue stick. And a lot of times what a glue stick is for is the issue with a lot of 3D printing is that it won't go ahead and it won't stick very well to this small printer pad down here. And you can put some glue stick on there and it'll help it stick. But what I'm interested in here is this little fella right here, which is the TF card. So we, it's nice that they provide that so you don't get to this point and go, oh no, I can't even use the device. All right, so here's the TF slot. I went ahead and put that in there. Make sure you follow this little tiny note right here telling you to put it in the correct direction. It's gonna look like there's something in there, but you can fit it in. So let's go ahead and give this a try again. Just so you know, there are things already on this TF card. If I click this, uh, there's a ship, a rabbit, a pterosaur, a hand, all sorts of stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and just try this one from the 3D site here. Go ahead and pick my device again and hit start. Let's see how that works. 
All right, good. So you can see here that the Dragon has now been sent over to the Tina 2S printer. So now what's happening is that the 3D printer here, and you can maybe see it on the screen, I'll go ahead and pull this back a little bit, is that it's actually downloading that file to the TF card. And while that's downloading, let's take a look at some of the things that are in uh, their library. So they have a huge library. They not only have a just general library of things that you can print. Now these are just kind of fun knickknacks, whether or not you want to do like a Christmas ornament, a little dog, a little uh, cat here. Now one of the things to remember when you're 3D printing is that you have PLA that's a specific color. A lot of times you're just with something this basic and beginner, you're going to get one color prints and you can then sand them down and paint them as you like. A lot of people like to paint sort of the miniatures. Uh, so if you print this one here, you won't actually see the different colors. It'll just be all white. And so there's a ton, there's tons of things that you can go ahead and download. These are just sort of uh, the recommended ones. Uh, there's toys. Um, one of the things that I actually like here is the fact that sometimes you can get uh, these little put together things. You remember those little plastic things where you break off each piece and assemble it. I like those type of things. And it looks like, oh, it looks like we're going. It does show a lot of good stuff here on this screen. I'm really hoping that it does show up. But you can see here that your estimated time is about an hour and 26 minutes for this particular print. Uh, it does show your IP address. Uh, it shows your Wi-Fi signal connection, uh, the temperature of the PLA, um, the temperature of the nozzle, which is 183 degrees. Now what it needs to do is it needs to heat up the, to about 215, which you can actually see above there. It's gonna heat up to 215, and once it gets to that proper temperature, it's gonna start to print. And again, 3D printing is all about melting plastic and putting melted plastic in specific spots based on your printer. And when it dries, it's back to plastic again, and you got a little 3D printed item. All right, we're at about 213, so we should start to see this go here any minute. Now, when you're printing these types of things, you can actually change the layer height and the layer size. You can adjust different settings to get the better quality. Uh, I'm just doing this on the default quality, so you'll definitely see some of the printing lines. Now I'm gonna set up a quick little time lapse here so we can hopefully see the whole thing print and you'll be able to watch the whole process. I'll speed it up in post so you're probably watching it now. Alrighty, so here is the print, the final print that we just did. And you're saying to yourself, but Carl, that's not a dragon. You downloaded a dragon, you're right. When I started printing the dragon, it was gonna take a day and a half to actually print that dragon because it was a pretty detailed model. So I went ahead and just picked one that was already installed on the TF card because I knew that it would print quickly. But I just kind of wanted to give you a, a bit of a close up on the quality of the print. Um, if you're familiar with 3D printing, you'll know that a lot of these small little, I would get, I would say like filament marks here and in the window um, and around can be sort of, you just take an X-Acto knife and kind of trim those off. Every 3D print you do, there's some cleanup that has to be done and including this bottom part. So this bottom part here is called a raft. Almost all 3D models you create, if you add a raft to it, it'll help it to adhere to the bottom. And then this just kind of pulls off of the bottom just like that. And then if you want to use sandpaper, you can sandpaper this down, make it a little bit smoother, uh, paint this. But yeah, as far as the fidelity of the print, it looks pretty good. Um, I think you can change the settings to do smaller layer lines to make the quality a little bit better. But yeah, I mean, 
This is on par with any of the more expensive printers that I've used, and I would definitely lean towards using this for my personal prints if they're gonna fit within the printable area. I also just wanted to make sure to sort of highlight a couple of the features that really help this kind of step above the beginner level. Even though it is a very small printer and there's some trade-offs there, there are some really nice features that make this worth it. First thing is that it is uh, Wi-Fi connectable, so you basically connect this to your Wi-Fi. You can connect to it with the app, download models from their library. So having that ability to sort of get things onto here through Wi-Fi, I think is important. It, it also has has the TF slot that allows you to basically put all your models onto that card and pop it into the device and print from there. Automatic leveling. So basically all 3D printers have a printing bed and that's this down here. And this printing bed needs to be level because it's printing out layer by layer by layer. On the one that I had previously, you have to actually do that manually and it's a long tedious process. This has automatic leveling so you don't have to deal with it so your prints should be pretty precise every time. It also has the ability to pause printing. I think mine does too, but this one has the ability that if the power goes off mid-print or something happens mid-print, you can actually just start it back from where it was so it knows where it was and it'll continue. That's super important. That same platform that needs to be leveled is also heated, so that helps the 3D model adhere to the base while it's being printed. There is a nice LED light inside of here, which I didn't notice at first because it just kind of felt natural, but then when I noticed that, I realized that's very helpful to have that LED light in there that that sort of lights up everything and lets you see exactly what's going on. It has a quick change nozzle in here so that you can change out the nozzle in case it gets plugged or you can unplug it. And it's fairly silent. When I was using it, it was quick, easy to use. This is almost zero setup time except for plugging this tube in here and getting the filament set up. Other than that, I, I've been pretty impressed. So that's about it. Uh, again, this is the Tina 2S 3D printer. Thanks to them for sending this over for me to share with you. Again, I thought it was unique because it's an out of the box solution. Christmas is coming up. It's something you could easily pick up and get started with. Figure out what you like, what you don't like, and upgrade later. Not that everyone wants to upgrade from this. Uh, this is perfectly fine, but it really depends on what you're trying to print. My next step is actually going to be to print out some accessories for this. I'd like to get maybe a little tray on the side here that kind of holds that little accessory pack. I'm not sure where that went. That's one of the fun things about these 3D printers is that there's a huge community of people making things who have the same thing as you, and um, you can get accessories or little tools or things that help you with the 3D printer itself. If this helped you out at all, give me a like, subscribe. I'd love to see you back. But until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies, and I'm out.